Ghost Machine is a collaborative, shared universe, created by a variety of well-known people. It was announced on October 12, 2023, and it officially launched in January of 2024 with Ghost Machine No. 1. For those interested, there's an eye candy trailer one can watch on YouTube. The focus is on every genre except superheroes. Geiger and Junkyard Joe, two series created by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank, will be included in this new universe. To be clear, Ghost Machine is not one singular universe, but a group of universes that can, presumably, overlap so genres can be mixed and matched according to a creator's whims. The four universes, revealed in the official press release, are, quote, The Unnamed, a mysterious group of genre heroes from across history featuring characters and titles like Geiger, Junkyard Joe, Redcoat, and First Ghost. Rook, Exodus, a sprawling sci-fi epic which takes place in the far future on a world where every aspect of nature is controlled by humanity. Family Odysseys, centering around the time-displaced family, the Rocketfellers, and their friends. An epic horror universe, co-created and illustrated by one of our secret superstar artists to be announced, currently under contract." Unquote. The artist typed in that last entry turned out to be Ivan Rice, who was announced as joining the company on December 1, 2023. Rice confirmed this announcement two days later. The horror universe mentioned was subsequently called Hyde Street. The other creators involved are numerous and mostly well established, so I'm just going to throw up the graphic from Ghost Machine No. 1 instead of listing everyone and their various credits. In a joint statement, the founders stated, quote, our ambition for Ghost Machine is to push beyond superheroes, introducing new genres, characters, and shared universes, completely co-owned by all the creators involved. We see this as the future of how creatives will work and retain creative control and meaningfully participate in success like never before. We are not just a comic book company. We are the first wholly creator-owned and operated media company of its kind, born out of a desire to create and succeed together." Unquote. At a casual glance, this appears to be, essentially, Image Comics 2.0. So it's a version of Image Comics within Image Comics. The only real difference is it appears that everything is shared between creators, as opposed to the original Image founders who own their own creations. Although the specifics of how this shared approach is structured is unclear. For the record, despite the press announcement, this isn't the first collective of this nature. It was preceded by Man of Action Entertainment, a studio established by Duncan Rollo, Joe Casey, Joe Kelly, and Stephen T. Siegel in the year 2000, all of whom are established comic book creators. Certainly, their output is mainly TV-related, Ben 10 being the most successful property, but they have done numerous comics and video games, and it seems to be an active company. It can't be overlooked that the mission statement defines Ghost Machine as a media company. Presumably, the clout and experience of Jeff Johns and Brad Meltzer will be used to develop the concepts into other properties. So, like the previously examined AWA universe, comic books are the proof of concept portion of the business model. They are the gateway to licensing deals for TV, movies, and merchandise, which is the standard operating procedure for many companies. To me, this is a sign of the times, and something I mentioned in a prior video. For the most part, the public discourse around comic books is not about its qualities or strengths as a unique art form, but as something that's briefly mentioned in relation to movies and TV. Sure, comics are part of the conversation, but not the focus of it. The underlying effect, in my opinion, is this dilutes the presence of comic books in popular culture. To bring this back full circle, the early image comics were, objectively, total crap. But they were, undeniably, comic books first. Their success in other media was a side benefit. But they all began as comic book stories, not comic book properties. Which seems to be a distinction that doesn't exist in modern times. I think I've beaten that point to death, so I'll move on. As for the debut issue, it's okay as an introduction to the variety of series that are forthcoming. Mostly, it's a trailer in comic book form. One gets a taste of each universe and their specific flavor. Hyde Street has the least amount of definition. Other than it being a horror anthology, it reveals almost nothing. Unlike the other segments, Hyde Street doesn't contain character sheets or any additional material. Quite honestly, it reads like something thrown together at the last moment, which was probably the case since the artist, Ivan Reese, was under contract with DC and couldn't legally work on material until that contract expired. The unnamed portion seems like it has the most potential. 
which isn't surprising since it's been in development since 2021, following the publication of Geiger. Junkyard Joe, from 2023, also laid some foundational material, so it's already established and just needs to be fleshed out here and there. If I'm not mistaken, all the major characters were briefly mentioned or featured in Geiger and Junkyard Joe. Rook Exodus could develop into something interesting, but it's going to need the involvement of the artist, Jason Fabok, to maintain any momentum. At the moment, his skills in character design and staging a scene are what will draw eyes to the series. The Family Odyssey's universe is very Disney. I just don't see it succeeding based on this brief preview. Certainly, the writing of Peter J. Tomasi will attract some people, and that might lead to some success. But my instinct says, this universe will struggle early on, and will likely go away quietly within a year. As for Ghost Machine pushing beyond superheroes, well, the veracity of that statement depends on how one defines a superhero. Based on the material, one could make a strong argument that Redcoat, who cannot be killed, and Geiger, who is a radioactive bomb, are very much superheroes. They may not wear costumes, but they do have a standard outfit. As do the characters in The Rook, Exodus. There's also the Rocketfellers and Hornsby and Halo, all of whom have some currently undefined power. Mind you, the statement is intentionally vague and implies they won't rely on superheroes, not that superheroes won't be included. But with a casual glance, it seems the characters are reliant on special powers and abilities. The only distinguishing feature that's absent is colorful costumes and an origin story that establishes the premise. Otherwise, let's face it, these are superheroes. As a side note, I do have to point out that Junkyard Joe is a pretty clear copy of the DC character G.I. Robot. Sure, the origin and circumstances are moderately different, but the core concept is practically identical. Junkyard Joe was co-created by Jeff Johns, who probably maintains a friendly relationship with DC but that can change overnight. If some new management at DC comes along, they might be less friendly and more inclined towards legal action. And with Creature Commandos on the way, I think DC might take steps to protect that intellectual property. End of side note. In the end, the overall success of this venture is completely reliant on the dedication of the creators involved. They have to be highly invested and maintain a certain standard of consistency. There is some heavyweight talent, but that talent is meaningless unless they sit down and do the work and prove to the audience they aren't looking for that one idea that leads to a Hollywood payday. Because if one is cynical, it could be argued a few of these people are probably in the twilight years of their mainstream career. A venture like this could be seen as a way to ensure they have a retirement fund. The mission statement in the first issue is just words right now. It's boring corporate speak from a self-proclaimed media company. What the audience needs now is the creativity. Comic book fans are ready for the best work of each individual's career. Give it to them. All that's left to say is thank you for watching, or listening, whatever the case may be. Ironically, considering I just critiqued a strictly commercial package, I'm plugging my Patreon page and asking for your continued support. Hey, at least I live by the principles I preach. This channel has been really consistent for well over a year. That's got to be some type of incentive to show support. Anyway, what do you think of Ghost Machine? I mean, obviously it has potential, but do you think it will succeed? Let me know in the comments. Of course, thanks to all my current supporters on Patreon and YouTube. I appreciate every single one of you. I'd like to say an extra special thanks to Andrew Barton, Odin Ashcroft, Phil Sagan, Corey Drew, Alexa Zernish, Brian Deaton, Johnny Lim, Steve White, Taylor Dull, and Matt Marino. You are all justified and ancient. Hey look, a playlist. Check it out for a variety of fine video products. Until next time.